Hello. I just wanted to make a video where I, I reviewed um, the methods that we have to solve a system of linear equations like we've been doing in class. And we have talked about the substitution method, but let's just kind of go through this quickly. You learned this in Algebra 1. Um, so the problem here is if I take an equation like 5x plus 2y equals 13, I, I have two variables, two x's, I'm sorry, an x and a y. And so you can't actually you know, solve this equation <clears throat> because as the X would change, then the Y would also change to make this, uh, this true. And that's why you get a line, right? I mean, there's no one solution. There's lots of solutions to an equation like that. But in a system of equations, I'm looking for the place where each of these two Y's are the same value, right? Where for two different equations, the Y have the same value and the X have the same value. And the reason that I highlighted that is because I wanted to point out that um, we have, uh, you know, if Two of the, if both of these equations are true at the same time, then we can replace that y in that equation that was two, you know, two y here. But instead, I can replace it with an equivalent value, and so I'm going to use from the other equation negative three x plus six. And the reason I can do this um, <clears throat> is because y and negative three x plus six are the same thing. But now I can solve it because I only have this one unknown number, this letter x that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the, the one X that's going to make both of these expressions true at the same time. So now we just go through the solution uh, method, which in our case, I think we have to get rid of these parentheses using the, um, the distributive property. So I'll have a 5X still, and then positive 2 times negative 3 is negative 6X, and then positive 2 times positive 6 is positive 12. And now I think I can uh, continue to solve because... I have these two terms here that are alike, the five and the six, the five and the negative six X, and that turns into negative X, right? It's negative one X, because five minus six is negative one. Oh my gosh, that's supposed to be a 13. Um, and now you can kind of see where we're headed. We're gonna subtract 12 from each side. Um, you probably can see the answer coming. 13 take away 12 is one, but this says negative X equals one, the way that the reason that we can get rid of that or the way that we can get rid of that negative sign is one way is we could just divide by negative one because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And so it turns out that it, it looks like the X would equal negative one in this case, not positive one, but negative one. And that's half of the solution. The other half, you still have to go back and find the Y, but you know, you can use any, any equation. And I think maybe this equation is probably the easier one to use because uh, it says y equals negative 3 times x uh, plus 6. And what I did was I just replaced x with the value that I just solved for, for negative 1. And then I can, um, I think negative 3 times 1 is positive 3, and 3 plus 6 is uh, 9. And so I figured out that the common solution here um, would be uh, the, the one place where these two equations are equivalent is when x is equal to negative 1, y would equal positive 9. So that's my common solution. And of course, as you know, hopefully, you can always check your work using a, a graphing calculator. So here, I have Desmos open here, and I um, I, I graph these, these two equations, and we can see their point of uh, intersection is at negative 1, comma 9. Um, so then that's the substitution method. Again, we just replaced an equivalent value in one equation. I, I changed out the y for a, a negative 3x plus 6. The elimination method is something different altogether. The elimination method is the one where we add the two equations together to get a new equation. Now, I'm going to do this, but it's not going to work. So ne negative 2x plus 12x would be you know, positive 10x. Uh, positive y plus negative 2y would be negative y. And then 10 plus negative 28 would be negative 18. So I added these three terms together and I got a new equation. And this equation would also be true. But the problem with this is that I, you know, I still can't solve it because I only have, uh, or I have two different unknowns. So that doesn't really get me anywhere. And so what we have to do with the elimination method is we want to be able to add the equations together so that one of the variables disappears. And the way that we do this, as I'm sure you recall, is we have to multiply one or sometimes both of the equations by a number. And we have to pick the right number. So let's take, for instance, what if I multiply this by six? Now, there, I'm choosing six for a specific reason, but I have to remember to multiply all three of those terms by six. Six times negative two is negative 12x. Six times positive y is positive 6y. And six times 10 is 60. 
So by multiplying that uh, equation by six, I have this new equation here. And then beneath that, I'll, re I'll just rewrite the other equation without changing it. And hopefully you can see why I chose six because negative 12x plus 12x is not x or anything like that. It's just these two terms cancel or, you know, they one undoes the other. So it equals zero. So that's gone. And then if I keep adding, I can do six uh, minus or, you know, plus negative two y is four y. And then 60 plus negative 28 is 32. And now I have this really easy equation to solve. All I have to do is divide both sides by four and I got y equals eight. Now I can go back and find the x using either one of these equations. And I'd probably pick, you know, this equation as it was originally written because the numbers are small. So if I do negative two x plus eight equals 10, and if I just subtract two from each side, um, I'll get negative two, not two, I'm sorry. Sometimes my brain. If I subtract eight from each side, um, I'll get negative two x equals two and then divide both sides by negative two, and I got x equals negative one, which is a little weird because that was the, the x on the other problem, but that's just the way it worked out, All right? So I had to, again, manipulate one of these equations, change it by multiplying all three terms by a number so that I could then add these together and these 12s, right, canceled out. The x term just canceled out. And again, you can always check it using Desmos. I did the same thing. I typed it in here. Um, and there it is, negative 1, 8. But I wanted you to see how to use the um, elimination method. The last thing I'll do before I end the video is just show you that I could have eliminated this in a different way. What if I had multiplied by 2 instead? Well, let's see uh, real fast what would happen. So over here, I'm going to instead, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 2, and it will become negative 4x plus 2y equals 20. And then the other equation is still just 12x minus 2y equals negative 28. Now I can add these uh, equations together and um, the y's are going to cancel this time. There will be no y coordinates or no uh, y term is what I meant to say. And negative 4x uh, plus 12x is 8x. And 20 plus negative 28 is negative 8. And when I divide by eight, I got X equals negative one. And so, but that matches what I got when I solved it the other way. I'm not gonna go back and solve for Y again. Um, but you can see that there's often multiple ways of doing that. Hope that's helpful. See you next time.